it's another wonderful session of blockchain and not so smart contracts. Okay, let's get started early, and so we can we can have lunch early. Okay, all right. Um, today we'll have uh, five talks in the session, and the first talk will be given by uh, Sun 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 Hyung Lee from Kaiser and S Two W Labs. He will be talking about crypto cri cryptocurrency abuses in the dark dark web. Okay. Uh, so let's welcome our first speaker. Uh, uh, thank you for the introduction. My name is Sin Hyun. I'm a researcher at S2W Lab in South Korea. Today, I'd like to talk about our experiences and findings on cryptocurrency abuses in the dark web. This is joint work with my colleagues, Changun, Hido, Young and Professor Yong Dae Kim, Dong Su Han, Sue Sun, and Sung Hwan Shin from KAIST. <clears throat> I would like to start off this talk by briefly introducing anonymity services available today. The dark web has recently gained a lot of media attention. It is usually referred to as the websites based on Tor hidden services. This anonymous and untraceable network allows users to securely communicate with each other and the service provider operate their businesses without revealing any identities. Unlike the service web, access the dark web requires a very special browser, such as Tor or its plugin. Cryptocurrency is a digital currency which uses some um, cryptographical techniques to, um, <clears throat> to create a monetary transaction. It is also considered as an anonymous service because it provides strong privacy based on pseudonymous nature. Also, there is no regulation and verification process to use cryptocurrency. These services are designed for good, but let's take a look for real. Actually, we were able to observe that the majority of the websites in the dark web were selling illegal goods and services. Some of these websites were selling malware, providing ransom as a service, renting a hacker to conduct unethical hacking, trafficking in arms, counterfeit, and some of these sites were providing uh, hitman services. So, how are the traffickers on the dark web promoting their dark web sites and selling illegal goods? Since hidden services are not indexed by traditional search engines, they post ads on the clear net, such as social network service. When they post ads, they don't provide much information about details, but leave onion addresses with the keywords describing the goods for sale. Then, Using the onion addresses on the ads, the potential customer can access the dark web sites through a Tor browser. On the dark web sites, the traffickers provide much more information about details, how to purchase the item, and tend to leave cryptocurrency addresses for a payment method. Once the trafficker confirms the payments through cryptocurrency, they fulfill the order. On the dark web, we were able to observe so many websites offering illegal goods and services by using cryptocurrency. So we thought these are just tip of the iceberg. Our preliminary analysis result motivate us to deep dive into cryptocurrency abuses in the dark web. So we conducted this research to answer these questions. First, how badly cryptocurrency is being abused in the dark web? Second, how to investigate and uh, analyze cryptocurrency abuses in the dark web? To answer these questions, we performed a large-scale analysis on the dark web and investigated the perpetrators of financial and online activities. There were some technical challenges to conduct this research. The first was the data. Unlike the surface web, which is uh, well indexed by traditional search engines, such as Google or Bing, there is no search engine that covers the dark web sufficiently. So, to conduct a large-scale analysis on the dark web, we had to collect the dark web data from the scratch. Also, since there is no a full list of onion addresses, and the dark web site's owner frequently change their onion addresses to avoid being monitored, we had to figure out an effective way to collect the dark web data. Investigating perpetrators' behavior on the dark web is another challenge because they tend to leave very few information about themselves. As you can see, this guy is just selling hacked Netflix accounts and only providing an email address and cryptocurrency address. Even we have these pieces of information, it is difficult to trace perpetrator's behaviors because he's, a, 
he is using an anonymous service. Also, cryptocurrency, which do not provide much information about the sellers. Also, it is difficult to trace um, financial activities of perpetrators, although all transaction information is publicly available in the, in the public blockchain. For example, this figure illustrates a Bitcoin transaction, which has three inputs and two outputs. As you can see, there, there are no explicit links between input and output, so it is hard to, me hard to measure how much Bitcoins have flown into each output. Also, there is no information about the owner of a cryptocurrency address. The recipient remains unknown. So to solve these challenges, we designed and implemented the dark web and cryptocurrency analysis framework, which is called MFScope. Here, how it works. To collect the dark web data, MFScope uses a list of onion addresses from well-known dark web indexing services as a seed, and continuously crawl dark web sites by following onion addresses appeared on each dark web site. Then, it, is, it extracts cryptocurrency addresses from the crawled dark web pages, and it also provides the extracted addresses with corresponding dark web pages to security experts for manual classification process. The data analysis module in MFSCOPE helps to gain more insight into each crime case. Address clustering module finds hidden cryptocurrency addresses not exposed in the dark web. The cross-domain analysis module discovers any relevant information about the perpetrators. Also, finally, Financial analysis module traces illicit money flow from the perpetrator's cryptocurrency addresses. We used a 10K onion addresses collected from AMIA and Fresh Onion as a series of crawl. For 50 months, we collected about 27 million distinct dark web pages from 37,000 distinct dark web sites. In this work, we focused on extracting three different types of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Monero by using their regular expressions. We found that the extracted addresses include many meaningless addresses, so we designed our system to automatically filter out these unnecessary addresses, which were cryptographically invalid, have no transactions, or were extracted from blockchain mirror sites. As a result, we obtained 5,500 distinct cryptocurrency addresses. As you can see, we found that the, the Bitcoin is the most popular cryptocurrency in the dark web. So in this work, we mainly focused on analyzing and investigating Bitcoin abuses in the dark web. Once we have a list of Bitcoin addresses as well as their um, source dark web pages provided by our system, we can manually review the dark web pages to classify the Bitcoin addresses into two categories, legend made and illicit addresses. For example, the figure on the top shows a web page whose owner sells a hacked Netflix account. In this case, we can classify the address into um, illicit address category. In the case of the web hosting service, as illustrated in the bottom figure, we classify this deposit address into legend made address category. To accurately classify the Bitcoin addresses uh, from the dark web, we asked several security researchers to review and mark each address as either illicit or legitimate address categories. But since illicitness is a subjective measure, so we classify these addresses into three categories, a legitimate, possibly illicit, and illicit based on the number of votes from the security experts. As a result, we found that only 16% of addresses have been used for legend made purposes, such as accepting donations. Surprisingly, the rest have been abused for illicit purposes, such as trafficking in illegal digital contents, counterfeit weapons, other types of illegal businesses. In the rest of our, our analysis, we focused on the 85, 85 addresses that at least 70% of secret experts have claimed that these addresses are definitely illicit. This approach avoids possible bias. In the previous step, we obtained the addresses which are explicitly exposed in the dark web. However, it is so easy to generate Bitcoin addresses without restriction. So it is highly likely that they might have other addresses not exposed in the dark web. So our address clustering module finds um, hidden cryptocurrency addresses owned by the perpetrator by using two types of heuristics. 
The first algorithm is multi-input heuristic, which traces um, multi-input transactions in the whole blockchain. To make a transaction, a sender should possess some um, private keys corresponding to transaction inputs, so we can group these addresses are owned by a single entity. Another algorithm is change address heuristic, which traces a very specific transaction pattern by the wallet software. There is a rule in a Bitcoin protocol that forces to span every input in a single transaction. When a user sends Bitcoins to another address, a Bitcoin wallet software creates a new address, which is generally called change address, to receive the remaining Bitcoins. So the sender's original address and the newly generated address are grouped together. Using multi-input heuristic, we were able to discover about 3,000 Bitcoin addresses owned by perpetrator. And we also we using um, the both MISCN heuristics, we found more than 2,000 cryptocurrency addresses. As a result, since, uh, since 2014, their market volume is approximately 180 million US dollars. Also, as you can see in the last column of the table, most of the perpetrators had to actively operate their illicit businesses when we measured their volume. This result implies that they are ongoing businesses and not end of the stories. The cross-domain analysis module performed a Google search for discovering any other relevant information about perpetrators. In our analysis, we used their cryptocurrency address as a search keyword. As shown in this table, we were able to discover almost 400 search results. The search results provided us a variety of information about perpetrators. For example, we can identify perpetrators' real name, personal interest, and even their physical locations. Our financial flow analysis module performed taint-based cryptocurrency flow analysis to find out where they have sent money. The idea is basically about calculating the ratio of um, transferred bitcoins from a given bitcoin address to destination addresses. This figure illustrates one example of taint calculation. Let's suppose we want to trace 10 bitcoins transferred from the input address and there are two transactions in this trans transfer. In the first transaction, two bitcoins and eight bitcoins are sent to address A and address B. In this case, MFSCOPE calculate taint A and taint B for 0.2, 0.8 respectively. Then by following the subsequent transaction TX2 from address B, MFSCOPE calculate taint D and taint E by multiplying taint B with the corresponding ratio of transferred bitcoins. As a result, we can get 0.32 and 0.48 for taint D and taint E from the input money flow. Calculating taint values as stop conditions. If an output has not been spent, or a destination address is owned by a well-known service provider, or the number of transactions in taint calculation is over the predefined the number, MFSCOPE stop calculating taint values. By tracing the money flows, we measured how much of perpetrators' bitcoins have flown into different service categories. As shown in this figure, we were able to observe that about 61% of perpetrators' bitcoins have sent to cryptocurrency service providers. This result implies that the majority of the perpetrators in the dark web prefer to exchange their illicit funds into altcoins or traditional currencies. We also measured how many services that the perpetrators have actively used for each illicit address. This stacked bar chart illustrates a portion of transferred bitcoins from each illicit address to cryptocurrency service provider. As you can see, we were observed that most of the perpetrator prefer to use one particular service, not diversifying their expenditures. Finally, I'd like to introduce one of the real-world illegal value chains that we were able to discover while conducting this research. We found that there are two completely dif different dark web sites. Site A and site B each is selling a firearm and hacking service. It looks like they are operated by two different entities, but our system has determined that 
the Bitcoin addresses used in these sites are owned by a single perpetrator. Then our system unveiled the cryptocurrency addresses not exposed in the dark web and discover another two sites, site C and site D, that mentions perpetrators' cryptocurrency addresses. Especially, site D is quite like q and website. We were able to grasp it perpetrator's personal interest based on his post. This perpetrator mostly posts about uh, militant organizations or how to purchase unethical hacking tools. Based on his unique username appeared on site D, we were able to find his personal blog, which contained a variety of unethical hacking content, hacking, con hacking content, and we, can, we also identify their physical locations based on their geotagging information on each post. Finally, our system performed money flow analysis for perpetrators' cryptocurrency addresses, and we were able to identify four different services that perpetrators have actively used. In our paper, we have other crime schemes, including a um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin investment fraud, and other interesting findings, such as the hidden relationship between the perpetrators in the dark web and the shadow brokers, which is an infamous hacking group known for, um, known for exposing confidential data expatriated from National Security Agency. So please read our paper to get more information. Here is the conclusion. The dark web and cryptocurrency were invented for good. However, a combination of these has now become new threat. In this study, we have shown the cryptocurrency abuses in the dark web is pervasive and ongoing threat. However, before I wrap up my talk, I'd like to emphasize that even few evidence could reveal the mastermind behind these up-to-date anonymity techniques. So we have a chance to make our anonymity services safe and secure. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to answer the questions. On. Yeah. Uh, hi, Ben Schock from CISPA. Uh, quick question: Are you planning to open source MS Scope? Yeah, actually, um, actually, I'm not a decision maker, but that topic I needed to discuss with my advisor. Yes. Okay, because I think it would be great, especially if you. Yeah, actually, you can use um, blockchain specific API. We use the um, BlockSci, which is an open source, so you can use that this uh, open source to uh, for money for um, address clustering or, yes, address clustering or the other APIs supported by uh, BlockSci. All right, thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Jian Gao from Fudan University. Uh, I, I know that a lot of dark web residents use multiple signature transactions to guard their privacy. And would, would this kind of cases uh, kind of impact your methodology and how would you choose to tackle them? Uh, what was your last sentence? Uh, like when people use these kind of multiple uh, signature transactions to cover what they are doing on the dark web, how would your methodology treat these kind of transactions and how would you trace the people across these transactions? So um, you are asking about multi-input transaction or? The, those transactions that require multiple signatures, like uh, say they want two parties out of three to ah, sign. Yes, yes. Yeah, actually we ignore that kind of um, addresses. Yes, we only cover uh, just, just one, one private key and one public key mapping. So would you mean that uh, you are basically probing the a little bit shallow layers out of the great dark web outside there. So um, I can understand your question exactly. So uh, you're, uh, maybe you're asking maybe about. We'll, talk, we'll, we'll have a discussion later. Thank you. Oh, okay. okay. All right. If no other questions left, thanks, speaker, again.